as we talk about Fed Chair Jay Powell's comments, I, I mean, it seems like it wasn't a surprise that maybe no more rate hikes in 2019. But the balance sheet side of things, is that really what's driving the market right now? I think so. I mean, wow. <laughs> the Fed really came out much more dovish than anticipated. They did go from projecting two rate hikes in 2019, now, now all the way down to zero. They're projecting one for next year. But to be frank with you, I, I don't think that's real. I, I really think uh, the Fed kept that one in place just so they didn't have to come out and say that, look, the economy is really, really slowing right now and we don't anticipate hiking at all next year either. But yes, I think ending the, the balance sheet runoff sooner than, uh, than expected at the end of September, I think that really sends a signal to the markets that you know, maybe the economy is not that strong, and which it isn't. I mean, the economy is definitely slowing. We're in a slow growth economy right now. Um, so I think the markets are digesting that right now. So, so this is interesting because we know that one of the biggest opponents to a, 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 a Fed campaign to raise interest rates has been President Trump himself. President Trump can now maybe in some way claim victory, no more rate hikes in 2019, but he shouldn't be all that happy about why, right? Because the Fed is holding because of weakness, not just in the U.S. side of things, but perhaps globally as well. So what exactly does the narrative of the Fed have to kind of spin going forward to make sure that everyone realizes things are still okay here? I mean, things are definitely still okay here. The issue is growth is slowing. And when growth slows, when growth becomes scarce, what investors need to do is they tend to flock towards sectors that are outgrowing the, the S&P 500, and they shy away from those that trail the S&P's growth rate. So, um, you know, typically in recessions, investors start to move towards the defensive sectors with stable cash flows, and they avoid the cyclical industries. But, you know, we don't expect a recession this year. Uh, and quite frankly, given the Fed's recent statements with the Fed on pause, I think we may be in the clear until 2022 at this point. So you have to stay invested in stocks and you really need to look at those industries that are expecting higher growth. And we've done our analysis and those industries look like construction, insurance, cloud, software, internet retail. So those are some of the industries where I think there's great opportunities right now. All right, so those are great opportunities. I mean, it, it's fair to say that a, a, a massive rally off the lows that we saw on Christmas Eve have now reduced some of those opportunities. Would you still be putting money to work at these levels or is there a pullback at least in a broader market narrative of a bull that you can wait for to put that money to work? No, I think, uh, I think you should be investing right now. I mean, we're still looking at, at forward earnings growth on some of these industries of, of double digits. Some, some were projecting 20 plus percent earnings growth over the course of the next 12 months. So, you know, I think given the current macro landscape, I think there's a huge opportunity with the home builders right now. I mean, housing was beginning to struggle a bit as prices were coming up last year on real estate and mortgage rates were going up. It was making homes less affordable, but mortgage rates have reversed and they're actually down 60 basis points from November. They're at their lowest level in a year. It's making housing more affordable. We've got this strong consumer and uh, unemployment's low. Wages are finally rising. And what you have happening is home ownership is finally on the rise, but there's not enough homes. So the home ownership rate declined quite a bit following the Great Recession, but it's been rebounding ever since it bottomed in 2016. So people want to own homes again. The issue is existing home inventories are right around 30 year lows. So, you know, we need new homes and that's going to benefit the builders, especially in our case, we like DR Horton because they specialize in those affordable homes.